From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln Center for Agricultural Profitability, welcome to another episode of Nebraska Farmcast. I'm Ryan Evans, and on this episode, I'm glad to welcome back Brad Lubin, a Nebraska Extension Associate Professor, Policy Specialist, and Director of the North Central Extension Risk Management Education Center here at UNL. Dr. Lubin writes a monthly ag policy column for Nebraska Farmer Magazine, available both in print and on NebraskaFarmer.com. His most recent piece looks at the Farm Bill's timeline and its implications. And with the 2018 Farm Bill set to expire here at the end of September 2023 and the looming uncertainties, Brad sheds light on the challenges and considerations surrounding this crucial piece of legislation. Again, you can read that in full at NebraskaFarmer.com and in the latest print issue. We'll also link to it on our Center for Ag Profitability's website at cap.unl.edu. Brad, thanks for joining me. Good to be here. So first, can you just give a brief overview of farm bill legislation and uh, why these bills are so important, some of the major issues that are in them, and then how often they're supposed to be passed? You bet, Ryan. A farm bill, a large omnibus piece of farm legislation that that really authorizes numerous programs for farmers and rural America and all households across the country. Think of commodity support programs and disaster assistance programs, Those are the safety net programs that we sort of historically connotate with farm policy. But a farm bill also includes conservation programs and trade uh, promotion programs and rural development programs and the all important uh, nutrition assistance programs. The supplemental nutrition assistance program, in fact, is more than 80 percent of the expected spending under a new farm bill. So all of these come together in the development of or the expectations for what a farm bill brings us on a regular basis. We've been writing farm bills since 1933. So now we're going on 90 plus years of farm legislation, typically every five years. Uh, And the 2018 farm bill expires here in 2023 with a new farm bill expected uh, to carry us into the next five. That's right. So the 2018 farm bill, uh, as we mentioned, expires September 30th, 2023. So can you elaborate on the considerations when the farm bill passage does not happen on schedule? So the farm bill does expire at the end of September. Uh, We can say at this point in late September that there are no prospects of getting it done on time. Uh, We know we're gonna be late. Uh, In fact, we know that the farm bill isn't even the number one priority on Congress's agenda at the moment uh, because we don't have uh, appropriations bills for fiscal 24 that starts on October 1 of 23. So we're, uh, we're a couple steps away from actually getting to talk about a farm bill and we're gonna recognize that when it expires, we're going to be in this limbo phase where we don't yet have a new farm bill, but we don't yet have uh, uh, sort of people shutting doors and, and turning out, turning off the lights on existing farm policy. Uh, we'll live in a little bit of state of flux here for a time. And we'll get to more of what that might look like in, in a second here, but you've noted that the past three farm bills were not completed on time. So why do you think that there's a recurring trend of these delays in finalizing the bills? Yeah. The first is to recognize that a farm bill is very complex. If I described it as all of these different parts from commodity supports, farm supports, to conservation, to rural development, to nutrition assistance, the bigger it is, the more complex it is, the more groups you have and the more interest you have in terms of what should be in it and how it should be Uh, how it should be implemented. Now we've had increasingly difficult conversations about the parts that are in it and the prioritization of these programs versus those and the amounts of funding. And in fact, the the last uh, three farm bills have all suffered the fate of not being done on time in part because of fights over uh, conflicts over spending and priorities uh, program and and, uh, other uh, priorities uh, in the farm bill itself. In 2014 and again in 2018, we actually saw the farm bill go down in a floor vote in the House, both times largely in a fight over nutrition assistance program uh, rules and and spending levels. Ultimately, we came back and passed a farm bill, but not on time. And uh, that's the challenge that we continue to see today. Your column mentions that not all programs included in the farm bill are affected in the same way by its expiration. So could you just provide some examples of certain programs that would continue to function regardless yep. of the status of the bill? Uh, you bet, Ryan. It's it's a complicated mix, which which is why we sort of live in a limbo and you got to really think about which ones matter and which ones don't at the moment. Well, 
if we think a farm bill is about farm programs, then we are talking commodity programs. Uh, those are programs that are technically authorized for a crop year, not a fiscal year that expires on September 30th, not a calendar year, but a crop year. Well, the crop year is the crop year based on a 2023 harvested crop. So the 2023 field crops that we're harvesting in, out in, across Nebraska right now, those are covered by commodity programs and ultimately will make payments, if any, in October of 2024 based on final yield and, and final price numbers for the, for the crop marketing year. So we're a ways away from sort of worrying about we don't have coverage for the crop. But the first crop that we have to worry about the 2024 crop year is in fact milk. Milk is a crop from the dairy enterprise, uh, at least in terms of uh, this, this definition here. And thus we worry about policy uh, in the commodity programs when we get to January 1st of 2024, because the first commodity affected by 2024 crop year policy is milk. Uh, thus we've called it the milk cliff or the dairy cliff. If we don't get something done before then, we're, we uh, get to deal with something called permanent legislation which is a topic maybe yet to come. I should, I should add to that discussion. So another part of the farm bill is actually authorized permanently, and that's the crop insurance title. So crop insurance programs that we know already have permanent authority from other legislation. Farm bills tend to uh, potentially amend or modify some or expand some of those rules, but they're permanently authorized elsewhere, and so that's not the issue. We have some programs like nutrition assistance that have um, mandatory authority, but typically rely on annual appropriations. So the farm bill expiring doesn't fundamentally stop nutrition assistance from rolling out the door, but we do have to have annual appropriations approved in order for those programs to continue. There are some programs that truly do have an expiration date tied to the expiration of the farm bill. And for those programs, we may have no new uh, sign up, no new rollout of assistance until we see a new farm bill in place. So you mentioned it uh, just a little bit ago, the permanent legislation, which is from the 1949 and 1938 farm bills, that's considered a safety net to ensure that a new farm bill is addressed. So how realistic do you think the threat is of returning to this permanent legislation today? Right, that that 38 legislation and, and most most recently the 1949 farm bill is the last farm bill that doesn't have an expiration date. Uh, so when you read through statute, when re you read through the, the rules of farm program implementation, every modern farm bill has an expiration date. And for the life of the modern farm bill, it supersedes that permanent authority, but it never has never repealed it. So when a modern farm bill expires, we technically go back to that permanent legislation unless we've either reauthorized or, or extended um, existing authority, or we purposefully go back and repeal permanent legislation. We have not repealed permanent legislation now going on 70 uh, plus years. And the argument is that we can't really imagine going back to 1949 policy. It's not really technically feasible. Uh, it's not economically uh, sustainable. It's just not an option. But having it on the books is the hammer that says, you will get this job done. Uh, as painful as it may be, you will get the job done because the alternative is unacceptable. So with the expiration date fast approaching here, we're recording on September 26th, it expires September 30th. Uh, with that signaling the necessity to get something done, what do you foresee as the most likely outcome then for the farm bill this year, like a simple one year extension or something more comprehensive? You know, it, it, it's a good question. Uh, the first reality is the farm bill is going to expire and we're not going to get it addressed immediately. Uh, we're fighting over appropriations as well. Uh, and uh, when we're done with appropriations in one way or another, then we'll talk about how the farm bill fits into this. Um, we theoretically have until the end of the year to get something done in, in, sort of regular order. Uh, it's been a long time since Congress has really moved something in regular order. So, uh, so that still remains a big question. If we can't make good progress on a farm bill 
and we can't overcome the inherent political fights that have stymied the last farm, last two farm bills, and frankly stymied the debt ceiling bill and the appropriations process already this year. If we can't overcome those political fights uh, over spending, uh, we're likely to um, uh, sort of wave the flag at the end of the year and and push for a simple extension of current policy to make sure that we have something going into 2024. There's an opportunity to get a new farm bill in place, I think, before the end of the year. Um, there's a likely opportunity, maybe a more likely scenario, that we, that we work hard but ultimately have to extend current policy uh, before we can get the job done sometime early next year. And last thing, are you hearing anything from producers on the ground out there, ag producers, who are worried about this? Uh, what are some of their main concerns and mm -hmm. what's your advice for them? You know, one of the challenges is if the path to getting a farm bill done, either a reauthorization or a simple extension, that doesn't address the fact that everybody, one of the reasons that it's difficult is every group really wants some modifications and some changes. And it's difficult to figure out where the dollars would come from to make changes. So we want to strengthen the safety net, realizing that we're operating at higher price levels. We're also operating at much higher costs. And there's been some arguing about trying to bump up the safety net to reflect that. Well, you could bump up the safety net and there may be economic reasons to do so, but there are also budget implications. And so if we're fighting for the things that we'd like to see improved, that puts a burden on trying to find dollars to make the farm bill work. And that's one of the reasons that it's still sitting here in, in a stalemate. If we're looking just to keep the most critical pieces alive that, that uh, help us uh, survive into the next year, Conservation and crop insurance are good examples. Conserv crop insurance is almost always mentioned as the first and biggest priority. Well, it already exists. So producers don't have to lose sleep over the fact that, well, if we can't get a farm bill done, we don't even have crop insurance available. It's there. We know it works. Um, conservation is one of those programs that uh, we see increasing interest in conservation. We actually have conservation programs that are authorized for several more years because of the Inflation Reduction Act of last year. So think big buckets, crop insurance, it's there, we know it's gonna be there. Conservation, we have interest in conservation, but it already has some authority extended for several years as a result of legislation last year. Commodity programs, we need it, but we've got a few more months to, to make it actually work. Nutrition assistance, by far the biggest bucket in the bill, um, it continues subject to appropriations uh, and any changes demand a new bill. So thinking about the big asks, um, uh, we'll see them continue in one form or another. When you want changes, when you want to remember those smaller programs like trade assistance and, or trade promotion and research and development and uh, rural uh, development programs, those are things that need action and they need action soon. That's Brad Lubin, Extension uh, Policy Specialist and Associate Professor here in the Department of Agricultural Economics at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Brad is with our Center for Ag Profitability, and he writes a monthly policy report column for Nebraska Farmer Magazine, which you can find in both the print edition and uh, right now at nebraskafarmer.com. We also have a link to that, and it is excerpted on our website at cap.unl.edu, as well as in the notes to this podcast if you're listening on your favorite app out there. Brad, thanks so much. Thank you. Nebraska Farmcast is a production of the Center for Agricultural Profitability at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. For the latest research-based information and education resources to manage your farm or ranch operation, visit our website at cap.unl.edu. That's cap.unl.edu.